Hello, in this emulator video, I'm going to show you how to set up Nostopia, which is a NES emulator, and I'll be doing it for Windows. I'll be doing videos for Mac and Linux as well, and I'll also be doing videos to set up an Xbox controller and a PlayStation 4 controller, and if you have requests of other controllers, let me know as well. Okay, so this emulator works really well with a lot of features, and it's, it's a pretty simple one to set up. So let's just go ahead and Google it. First of all, I would recommend that. Uh, uh, no, I was going to no, not recommend. I was going to say was you can you know just follow along with you know typing the you know links out or searching, or you can just get the links from the description. Just go to the Nestopia website, go to downloads, and click that you know binary file. And I just want to say this video is not condoning piracy. It is for educational purposes. I assume that you own the games that you will be playing on a NES console for legal purposes. Once you got this, right click, go to extract all and click extract. You can use an alternative tool like 7-zip, feel free if you, you know, want to, that's your choice. And you just open up this nostopia.exe. Here we go. So let's show you some of the, you know, features in here. For input, this is not where you actually map the control. But auto select is pretty good to use. And port one, you can actually select, you know, what port is, you know, what, you know, pad is going to be. If it's going to be like a mouse, power glove, that sort of stuff, which is pretty darn cool. And you can set like four player adapter. You can set external stuff. You can even set the region as well, which is pretty cool. Auto is probably the best thing. You can even do net play, and you can like do view like screen size, set it to three times, for example. Probably a bit too big on the amount that I've zoomed in, so we'll do this. And now options is where you know some of the good stuff is. Go to video, and in here you can increase the resolution, and this just helps you know you know the image look better. You can change the filter as well, 16 and 32 bit. You can you know adjust for power and NTSC screen, change brightness, saturation, contrast, hue. And like there's a bunch of features and feel free to change the palette if you want it on RGB or you know YUV. Okay, so most of the stuff I generally leave and I'll just do you know increase this slowly just to see you know if I can get a better resolution out of it, but I think this is fine for now. And there's sound settings, you can put it to stereo, for example, I'll leave it at mono. You can I, I just use primary sound driver because that'll just be linked in with what with whatever your Windows one is, you know, set to, but you know, feel free to use some alternative one as well. And feel free to mess around with the channels if that's what you want to go for. For input, this is where you can map your control. So you can do like regular pad one, two, three, four, you know, power glove, power pad, like it's there's a lot of things that you can map to it. And like I said, I'll have separate videos covering how to, you know, map controllers like Xbox and PlayStation 4. But in this video, I'll just cover keyboard. Let's say if I want to configure pad one, you go into that. This is the key that we'll be mapping, and then you select it. So left, and if I want to map it to, let's say I, for example, you double click it. it. Says press any key or joystick button. I have this amount of time to do it. Press I. There we go. If I want this back as left. I'm happy with that. But uh, select is right shift. I'm happy with that. Start is enter. I'm happy with that. For A and B, I want B to be X. And I want A to be space, auto fire, B and A, not fussed about, you know, changing them. And that's it really. And so if you want to allow up and down and left and right simultaneously, that's pretty cool as well. Because like the original sort of, you know, D-pad would have been difficult to do it. I don't think you could do it, but with you know, emulators, you can do stuff like that. And you, you can have a look at timing. I think one of the main things you probably want to select here is V-Sync. It'll just help, you know, prevent, you know, screen tear. And well, we got paths as well. For the most part, I recommend you leave this as is. This is just where the stuff like save states, cheats and patches will be stored. If you want to set it somewhere specific, click browse. Otherwise, leave it, you know, relative to that folder. That's what I recommend. And then there's some preferences as well. So like, you know, your favorite system, you know, file association. So if I do these associations, if let's say I have a .nes file, I double click it, you'll open this emulator up. So I don't have to open the emulator up 
then you know drag and drop it you're just opening up like you would with like a dot exe for example and you can you know select you know any style or famicom style for the icons that are appearing windows for example and a bunch of other settings feel free to have a look at them as well cheats i might do a separate video for that and database language auto save which is pretty cool you can actually set it to auto save every you know minute or every 10 minutes automatically so that's one of the great things about emulators is that you can have a save state anywhere you want and it's not dependent on if the game saved it but with this emulator you can save it every so you know often and it works really well with this because the saves are really really tiny so you gotta make sure you click start once the game has loaded if you want that for example and let's launch up a game you can either press open control o or drag and drop it on and there's like sound recorder you know movie recorder as well so you can go to recent files and directories as well so let me just open up super mario world i don't have the extension you know associated with it so i'll just drag and drop there we go and i'll compress the select key which is shift right shift to go up and down and enter to select i'll be able to move around soon And that's it. That is how you set up the NES emulator. What I'm gonna do now is just play the first level, but if you know that's all you wanted to see, I'm all done. And you can end the video or watch me play the first level of Super Mario Bros. Ah, uh, that was so bad. I'll just do this way instead. Nearing the end of the level now. Oh yeah. And you can also maximize like that as well, but that stretches it. You do not want that. You can press Alt Enter and that will go into full screen mode. It's pretty cool. Um let me yeah so sometimes when you go into full screen and come out of it you can mess it up a bit but let me just sh shut that down now but yeah that is it if you have any questions feel free to you know join compatibility settings yeah that's fine we don't need to mess with that yeah if you have any questions feel free to join the discord group link in the description over 6,000 members there will be a nostopia you know channel in there so feel free to post questions there and yeah, you know, if you have any questions about ROMs or, you know, ripping games, you know, that sort of stuff, you know, we're happy to help there as well. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.